With the introduction of Vue.js into the front-end framework world, it's become really easy for us to develop apps. Its peer dependency, Vue.x, also made it easy for us to manage state in our application using things like store, state, getters, mutations, actions. But Vue.x brought a little bit more than just ease of development. It also brought a few things that might cause trouble in application, like user experience or logging out errors or maybe just finding an error due to some sort of lifecycle method calling at the wrong time. Today we're going to have a look at some tips that you could use in your development experience to improve your app's flow and also make your life easier. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. In order for us to be able to start using the Vuex store, let's set up a quick project using the Vue CLI by installing it globally on our system. After installing that, we can check out the documentation on how it works and we really want to use this create method to instantiate a new project. We use this create command to create a new project, Vuex best practices, so that we can use some of these store methods. It takes us through a list of options. I usually manually select the router, Vuex, CSS preprocessors and maybe some testing. Once the project is installed, I open it up with my code editor and reset some of the values. In the app.view, I remove the about link and I set it to the repos link where we'll pull some GitHub repositories and display them on the screen. Next up in the home.view file, I just replace the hello world component with a new message called Vuex best practices. I then remove some of the boilerplate code in the hello world.view component and replace the leading text with some of my own. Then create a new component called repositories and another component called repositories placeholder which we'll use during this project. I then go on to create a repos file where I will display all the repositories that's been pulled from GitHub. To ensure that the repos view is rendered on the repos route, I set that in the router folder. And then I render the application in the browser on a development server. To save some time with the CSS, I just imported uh, Bootstrap to the head of the file and set some containers and create the repositories component. Each card will display the date that a repository was created, the title or name of the repository and some other information that's going to be pulled from the GitHub JSON API. In the repo.view file, I make sure that I import this component and place it inside of the view. Next up, I just seed the state in the store with a little bit of data. The data sort of matches the GitHub uh, response object, just so that we could have something to look at for now until we make the request. Tip number one is properly using state and getters. To show you some examples on how the GitHub API relates to the state at the moment, I am installing a Chrome extension called JSON View that helps us to see the JSON in object format where we can look into the tree of the object.
Now the response from the GitHub API will be much better and easier to understand. Some of the properties that we have used is the ID, the description, the fact that it's been forked and the repos URL. A really common issue that I see with Vuex and using Vuex is that state and getters isn't managed correctly. For instance, sometimes you would use state when you should be using your getters and sometimes you would use getters when you should be using your state. State is meant to be pulled from the store as is. When we pull state from the store, we shouldn't be doing too much logic inside each component that it stays in because what if another component needs that exact same logic? And that's the point of getters. A tool that we can use to look at some of these um, Vuex store uh, properties and methods is the view dev tools. Uh, install it on your Chrome extension or Firefox. And then when you go to the view tab and click on the view X tab, you'll see that your state is inside the uh, store. And then if you go to your component that is using that state, you'll see that it's binded. To put this store state into action, I just use the array values to loop over it with a v4 and then list the repo information as cards and a list. This use of the state is okay because it just pulls the data as is from the store. There isn't much modification going on. But if we look at the date on top of each card, we could see that it doesn't render that well. And to test if our state is hooked up and if it's dynamic, we can change our fork property to see if our repos update and they do. So to do something about that date on top, we'll be using getters because this is a perfect use of getters because we want to display the data, but in a changed way. By just calling repos and then saying state.repos and return the repos as they are is quite redundant because we could get that directly from the state. The point of getters is to change the state and in this case we filter the created at date by mapping over the array, looking at each repo inside of the array and changing the created at date to the substring of the first 10 letters. This way we'll get the nicely parsed string of the correct date. Now to use it in our application we need to use map getters and then change our map state into a destructured um, object and then also destructure our getters in order to use that created at that's been filtered from the store. Now not only do our components render the date correctly but any component in the application can use that. So let's display that by using it in the parent component repos. We map the getters from the store, we get the filter created at, and let's add some dates on when we started creating and what was the last time we created a repo. In this case, both dates would be the same because we statically typed those. So it should be time for us to look at another problem in um, Vuex and that's managing asynchronous actions. The next tip is how to handle the side effects of these actions. First of all, we are going to make an async request to the GitHub API to set some of the repositories through a mutation that we'll create called set repos. So the mutation will be used to actually update the state and the action would be used to store the asynchronous code. The next step would be to dispatch this action from the app so that we could actually make the request. So let's just have a look at the flow of the data again quickly. First we create the dispatch, the action sets the mutation, the state changes and every component receives it through the map state computed property. This could cause some lifecycle errors because that was an asynchronous request and sometimes we'll console.log the entire store to see if the data has been plugged in there. But this is a little bit redundant because we don't actually need to log out the properties. We can actually set up ourselves for some better tests and that leads us to the next tip. Using debugging to test our code. This log was a little bit redundant. We are sure that we do have the array now, but we might as well just look at the page. 
So to improve this, let's go through the entire flow of the data by console.logging that we dispatch the action and then actually starting a timer to let us know when these things are running. So now in the console we'll see a little bit of a better message saying we did dispatch that action. Next we want to log in the store that we've sent this action to our mutations. But first let's do an assertion to test whether our repos have a length that is larger than zero. And to show you how the assert works is that it, if the first argument is false then it will give us an assertion error. And this really helps a lot with debugging our actions and whether something exists or not. So let's go down the chain and go to our mutations and actually log out some more information for us to use when we debug our code. First of all, let's log out that we have dispatched the action, it is complete, and then we set a timestamp to see how long that took from the moment we created the timer in the created method. When we load the page, we'll see that the dispatched action logs and then it completes about a few hundred milliseconds after we created it. Logically, the next step should be to log out when our component is mounted, whether we have mounted to the app and what the current time is. And logically, this should be in the order that we anticipate it to be, but this is where the async code might mess with us. And our debugging has proved that by showing us that the component mounted before it received data, and this creates a weak user experience. So let's look at the component when it becomes updated. Let's see at what time that happens so that it's easy for us to know whether we should maybe render the placeholder. And here we can see that the, after the update we already have the data and we had it about 6 milliseconds before we updated. So we need to do something about this user experience. And to address that, let's use a common approach of rendering the empty cards or whatever is going to display on the page. So we'll duplicate exactly what we have as the cards, but because there's no data, we'll remove the actual text and stuff, but we'll still loop a few so that the page is filled with data. And then we'll set the styling to make the cards match the cards that will be rendered after the data has been received. Then we create an is loaded computed property to see if we have data and if the data is there we set is loaded to true else we'll set it to false. Now we have this computed property that will allow us to use a vif and a vlse on our template code. And we should make sure that we do have the state by doing a map state and getting the repos so that we can count them and we should import the repositories placeholder so that we can render it as a component. Now if we look at our logs that we set up we could see that we still get the same order of events. We dispatched the action, we mounted the component, then the action completed and then we reset the is loaded to true so that we can render the component. But while it's false we will render this placeholder. So let's have a look at that. There you could see the components were empty for a while but it is a much better experience than if we comment this out and have a look at it where we see a empty page for a few milliseconds. This does create a better user experience and thanks to our different debugging methods and using this store, we actually created a bit of a better experience. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please look at some of all the other videos and if this video was helpful, it's a bit of a new approach I took to making the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you didn't like it, it's fine. Um, remember to have a lookout for the course coming on the full stack node.js blog. I have completed the code like 80% so if you want to you can view that in the link below. And as always remember if you want to support the channel you could subscribe or like and if you really want to help out you could leave a donation and the link is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.